when the operator of a motor vehicle presses the steering wheel's horn button, an electrical signal is passed to the horn through a relay control. Next, battery voltage is applied to the horn terminal and then to ground. Current flows through the coil to the contacts. Current in the coil generates flux in the iron path, setting up a north-south pole condition between the pole and the armature. This north-south condition causes a magnetic pull between the stationary pole and movable armature in the working air gap. The armature moves toward the north pole, pulling the diaphragm with it. This diaphragm movement causes an air void in the pump area, which causes air to rush in through the air column from the outside. As the armature nears the end of its travel, it touches the spring and opens the contacts to the coil. This stops the magnetic pull by stopping coil current. Without the pull between the pole and armature, the diaphragm then returns to its original position. The armature no longer holds the contacts open and current flows through the coil which starts the next cycle of the pump. This return diaphragm movement causes air to be pushed out of the pump area through the air column. This off-on pump arrangement causes air pressure to change very fast. 300, 360, 450, or 540 times per second. The human ear then perceives this as sound in various frequencies from high to low. The 300 cycles is a D note horn. The 360 cycles is an F note horn. The 450 cycles is an A note horn. And the 540 cycles is a C note horn. You will notice that the final digital reading stands at 2.80. No, this is not minutes, nor is it seconds. This represents milliseconds. If we put all of the steps together and slow the cycle down from an incredible 540 beats per second, you will view something put on film for the first time. If the human heart had to work as hard as a horn must, it would not last five minutes. We'll start with this finished horn and disassemble it into its component parts. Let's trace this projector to its origin and watch it being made. The molding material is heated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, compacted into four individual cavities and cooled to change from a fluid to a solid state. Precision molds along with a proper blending of temperature and pressure. Finished projectors are formed and unloaded. From here, the parts are taken by means of conveyor to the next step in the manufacturing process. This operator places projectors on the inline. 
to assure a positive air seal for the air column, 400 degree hot melt must be applied uniformly between the projector and metal plate. Coil stock is fed through a die, flattened and trimmed, and through progressive steps is transformed into a finished plate. The employee must load plates in maximum groups of 50 and places at angles for satisfactory washing and phosphating. The washer unload operator places finished plates on pallets for use on the plate and projector inline. The metal plate is next placed atop the hot melted projector. The screw is automatically fed and driven to supplement the sealing process. Rivets are fed, placed, and their presence checked which subsequently provide a means of attaching the back shell. Constant ring and cone monitoring is done to ensure that proper frequencies are achieved in finished horns. This 24 station dial performs consecutive operations of fiber washer placement, armature placement, diaphragm and retainer washer placement, automatic staking and unloading. We are now ready to produce the back shell or the necessary framework for the horn. The progressive operations of notching, shearing, drawing, redrawing, piercing holes, swedging, stamping and blanking are performed on 500 ton presses. Supports are automatically loaded onto the dial to receive a contact which is placed and secured by a spun rivet operation. We place a purchase spring onto this dial where we affix a second contact by means of another spin operation. The coil winders provide us with the final component to the back shell assembly. Wound with 120 turns per coil, sealed in place, cut, stripped and wrapped around the rivet hole. Rivets are first placed and then the support. The first operator verifies the presence of rivets and support, then places the fiber washer and spring. The next operator checks for the presence of all previously placed parts, then inspects and places a coil parts before placing the back shell. The retainer plate is welded. The back shell then passes under an air hydraulic staking cylinder which rolls the two rivets and secures all the parts together. Finished back shells are finally unloaded. Alkarimi horns requires many mounting applications. This results in a multitude of various designs. Material is formed and cut to length. Now that we have all the necessary parts, let's put them together. Each of the more than 50 different model horns require their own date code and model stamp. Watch the plate and projector assemblies being placed on the line. Now the diaphragm is being placed upon the plate and projector. The back shells are then placed over the rivets protruding through the plate and projector. Keep in mind that the terminal must be in its proper position. A series of spinners which utilize pressure and later heat to diffuse a rivet head. Now we see the date code and horn model number being permanently burned into the plastic projector. Press the bracket in a predetermined location and is welded. At this point the horn is complete. 
but we are ready for minor adjustments to a finished horn. Horns are again blown before leaving this acoustical booth and either determined to be acceptable or in need of further adjustments which can be provided in a hand operation. Horns that did meet Delco Remy's specifications are unloaded to a conveyor which passed to the final operator. The assembled horns continue to pass along a monorail conveyor which lowers them into the paint tank. This black alkyde paint is mixed with a solvent to maintain proper viscosity. Once the horn exits the paint tank, it remains on the conveyor for approximately one hour to allow the paint to dry. The finished horns are unloaded into wire containers or cardboard containers as specified by the customer. Thank <laughs> you.